Welcome to the castle, everybody. This is Night Saber Z42, and it's day four of the Hellenica coverage. Um, we made it to Sparta, uh, so let's talk to the Spartan guy. More tourists? Considering the Civil War, it was surprising enough when the Athenians showed up. You are not unwelcome here, foreigners, but remember our laws. Spartan justice is harsh. Um, if you don't mind my asking, what caused the rebellion? Sparta has always been a land of tradition. Tch. When King Agassilaus started changing things, some Spartans decided that the traditions of slavery and anti-mechanism were more important than the tradition of loyalty to our king. They, they can say freeing Sparta's slaves is upending the natural order of things. They can say introducing Theomachanae will weaken our warriors. But none of that excuses breaking their oaths to Sparta and its king. They're traitors, and we'll deal with them accordingly. Everyone seems so calm even though there's a war going on. We've spent our lives training for battle. I'm only upset that my duty is here and not on the front lines. Alright, how about Asibiades? Asibiades, what are you doing here? Oh, the Ludite rallies are causing tiresome disruptions in Athens, so I thought it would be a good time to take a vacation. It's rather funny that here in a country actively at war with Ludites, they're seemingly able to cause much less trouble. If only Athens would have its own civil war to finally sort out the issue. How can you say that? So many people would die! Psh. It took a great war with Persia for Athens to convince half of Greece to join its alliance. Uh, excuse me, click. And we've hardly been shy about persuading members who decide our protection is no longer necessary. Nothing brings consensus and stability faster than a quick bloody battle. The only trick is making sure you're on the winning side. Okay, well that was a nice simple dialogue. King Agassilaus. But I don't understand why you don't just force the rebels into a decisive battle in the open field. Their motley band is hardly an army and you have the greatest soldiers in Greece and some truly frightening ma machines of war. If even half the stories about your army steam-powered autoconnectons are true, they'll tear through your fo foes like the Cyclops of legend. And so great will be your victory that... Hmm, my foes were Spartans before they were rebels. Overestimating our advantage is a sure path to defeat. Whoa, look at that arm. It's got like a steam arm. Additionally, my commanders report that the rebels have shown a natural strength when facing our autokinetica, or autokineta, piercing their iron armor and melting their gears. Sounds like overactive imaginations trying to excuse military defeats. Perhaps you should consider new commanders. Perhaps you should consider that no matter how wealthy or powerful your family is in Athens, it means nothing in Sparta. And as Sparta's king, I would rather take strategic advice from a chirping bird. What's this? Are more Athenian meddlers here to tell the Spartan king how to conduct his war? What? No, not at all. If you want help fixing a broken Theomachene, then I'm your girl. Otherwise, you do your Spartan things. We just wanted to warn you about some equipment the rebels recently received. You were spying on the rebels? Well, not intentionally. We just happened to be in the area when they got a shipment from some pirates. It seems like they have a powerful ally somewhere across the sea. Hmm, what kind of ally? And what kind of equipment? Well, we didn't get close enough to look at them, but the masked rebel leader said they would help him in the end of the war. I see. And what exactly do you expect me to do with this information? All you told me is that someone somewhere gave something to my enemy. Then perhaps it's time for a reconnaissance mission. Oh, so you, like the, like that Alcibiades brat, would presume to teach tactics to the king of Sparta. Who said anything about your soldiers? I would sooner talk, stalk a rabbit on a donkey than have a Spartan scout. The two of us, however, are adept at moving unseen. We are? Ah, uh, you girls would be worthless in war. I assumed a king would be wiser in how he treated a servant of Artemis. You're an Actos? Please, m forgive my earlier rudeness. I was in a sour mood because... It doesn't matter. Know that I have the highest respect for your goddess and her disciples. 
If you would be willing, I think I might have a task well suited to your talents. Oh, we definitely like to help. As adventuring heroines, we're always looking for our next challenge or quest. I see. The news of secret shipments to rebels in addition to some unexplained setbacks in battle are proof enough. It's time to end Sparta's diplomatic isolation. I want you to take an offer of an alliance between Sparta and Athens to Socrates. Pardon me, King Agassilaus. I couldn't help but overhear, and I must stress to you the folly of that idea. Being an Achaemenid, I'm very familiar with important people in Athens, and I don't think they would be receptive to your offer. Most of Athens isn't very fond of Sparta, and they've got their own troubles with the Ludites at present. I especially wouldn't send your message with these two barely civilized girls. On the other hand, if you would ask me to deliver this message, I could use my connections to Hold your silver tongue, Athenian brat, or I'll cut it out. Your oily speech might win you favor in the assemblies, but in Sparta, you're just a snake. Now go slink back to your hole. Returning to important matters, I realize Athens and Sparta haven't always seen eye to eye, but we should unite to deal with the growing Ludite menace. New path unlocked! Oh, we can still talk to him. Um, since you're asking us to bring your offer of an alliance to Athens, we should probably know a bit more about Sparta, like, why are you at war? Of course, though it's hardly a grand revelation. Simply, Sparta has always been a city-state that rigidly follows tradition. And while this discipline has helped our army remain undefeated for two centuries, it makes us stubborn when presented with new ideas. We waited so long to enter the Age of Steam that many found its advances radical and threatening. That is where the seeds of the rebellion were sown, and I didn't realize it at the time. Even when I nearly came to blows with my friends and mentor Lysander, I convinced myself his doubts were merely passing discomfort. I can't imagine anyone not liking Thema can I? The rebel Spartans fear being lost in the Age of Steam. If I were wiser, I might have bit, I might have more tactfully approached my next goal of freeing our slaves, but I thought the loyalty of the Spartan people were absolute. I was wrong, and my folly has cost the lives of so many in this war. I didn't realize that Sparta still had slaves until recently. It's a shameful chapter in our history, but without steam power, our slaves had to be the backbone of our workforce. Their thankless labor in our fields was the only reason we had the food to feed our armies. Wow, I didn't think it was possible for a Spartan to admit wrongdoing. Oh my gosh, how long does this guy need to talk? Are you ever going to ask about my theomechanical, theomechanical arm, or are you ju going to just keep staring? I'm sorry, I just... It's such an exquisite device, as intricate and beautiful as the wings on a butterfly, and sturdy as a train. I don't recognize all of its pieces and that glow. Is... is it a living machine? The living machine of the Pythagorean order are myth. The Order is just a bunch of heretical outcasts who hide in the shadows and make up grand rumors about themselves. You've encountered them then? No, but their ideas are ridiculous. Machines are made of brass and steel, and they're powered by coal. They can't have souls. Ah, uh, but if you've never encountered them, then isn't it possible that rumors are true? Perhaps they really do build wonders and hide them in the utmost secrecy. Maybe they really have created Theomechanic the mechanical life. Could he be a member of the Pythagorean order? Hint, hint. Though a simple king of Sparta would know one way or another, of course. This arm was given to me by Hephaestus after I traveled Greece collecting the mechanical odds and ends that a capricious nymph had stolen from his workshop. Oh my gosh. Wow! Did you see Hephaestus? Ooh. Or what about his workshop? And what did the theomechanical mechanical bits look like? It's a grand tale. It all started when... My king! News from the front! The third division has been destroyed! What? How is that possible? It had some of our strongest autocannitons. We don't know, my king. When we found remains of their armor, it looked like it had melted. I'm sorry, girls, but this needs my attention. Diana! Do you think that's the work of the equipment we saw the rebels get? It can only... I can only think of one way to find out. Okay, so a new path has been unlocked. Alright. Story. Three paths, I guess. We're, oh, we've only got one and two. 
Um, let's go ahead and we'll stalk the front and find out exactly how the rebels are defeating Spartus Autokinetons. All right, finally into a battle. Oh my gosh, what is that? What am I on? By Apollo, look at this wreckage. I guess we now know what happened to the Spartans' autokinetons. But how? Autokinetons are mighty war machines, striking off spears and arrows as if they were twigs. Well, the ground is charred. Maybe they set them on fire? But bronze doesn't burn. There's something unnatural about this battlefield. Look, I think the autokinetons mostly intact. Why are we glowing? Hmm, a few support trains have been melted together. But maybe I could bypass it. Uh-oh. Here they come. What have we got here? More Spartan scouts coming to survey the fate of their lost division? Like lambs to our slaughter. You've caught a wolf this time, you rebel scum. And a bear, right, Diana? You'll die just as easily as the rest. There'll be no mercy for you cog monkeys. Men, attack! Diana! I almost have this autokinetone working. Just like you got the boat working on the Athenian docks. By Apollo, you're always so critical. We got out of that one in one piece, didn't we? Come on, Gears, turn. All right, it's moving. Woo, it's working. Praises to Apollo and Nike. I've always wanted to drive one of these beauties. Here we go. Oh, she's actually getting in it. Defeat all the rebels, deal damage with the autokinetone. I have one skill point available. You have shield bash, and what else do you have? Oh. Tribute to Ares. At the end of the player turn, Brasidas summons a tribute to Ares for each newly defeated enemy. Allies attacking from tribute spaces gain a bonus to their damage. Nurse allows them to regain some health at the end of each turn. Challenge, Challenge an enemy, pulls the enemy towards Brasidas, and forces them to try to attack him in the next turn. Surround Brasidas with a Spartan Vanguard. Brasidas takes half damage from all sources for one turn. Hmm. Enemies that attack Brasidas with a melee attack will take increased damage for one turn. Um. I think the Iron Vanguard actually sounds really good. Let's equip that too. So we got Iron Vanguard and Shield Bash with Brasidas. I think next time we're going to go ahead and unlock the Power Shot with Nefel. So... There we go, skills are set. Let's start the battle. There's eight enemies. And there we go, we turned into a bear. I only see two though. Okay. Well, whatever this thing is, it's gonna come right into battle. Can you move that? There we go. 92 out of, oh wow. So we're definitely gonna strike. Oh, strike three enemies in front of the, oh yeah. Heck yeah. How awesome is that? Um, I'm a little curious to know where the others are. I think what I'm going to do though. The problem is I can still attack him. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. He's probably going to end up dying from this strike. And then with Diona, we're just going to go ahead and roar. Oh, that's adjacent. That's right. Yeah, we're going to maul him. He's going to get pushed back. And that'll be fine. So here we go. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for this auto. Oh, look at that. 20 piercing damage. Oh, but my defense went down. And you're not dead yet. That's really sad. He'll move up and attack, right? All right. So, we got a little bit of damage. Ah, there we go. That's the rest of what I was wondering about. Okay, you're going to come up here. And you're going to strike at both of these guys. Hopefully, you can take them out with ease. Diona is going to go ahead and maul. And Brasidus will come up and strike and kill. There we go. So we're going to try to use the bridge to our advantage. Hopefully we won't be flanked, but I can use, um, wow, really? That's such weak damage. That's horrible. We're going to use the machine to actually kind of do some flanking of our own. Actually, it might not be able to go into water. Uh, 
Okay, we still have bear form. Brassidus, come on up. Uh, we're gonna strike right through. You will die from this attack for sure. Oh yes, and the auto Kinaton. It's going to oh charge an alignment, toss all impact it carries behind. Them. Oh okay, that's cool. Um, how do I come back? Oh yeah, there we go. We're gonna steamroll. Actually, nah, we're gonna go ahead and strike because that will do more damage. And we're flanking, right? So we'll do more damage, hopefully. Okay, defense is up for uh, the bear. And there we go. We did more damage because we flanked. So this will be excellent for us. All we have to do is worry about like the back row attackers because they can t attack too. Oh, and diagonally. I didn't realize that. But Brassidus is also taking damage because he's adjacent. Which is good right now because um, Diona is kind of weak. In her form. So piercing versus heavy. I don't think that would... Oh, you know what we're going to do? Game roll it, baby. So we're going to steamroll all the way over here. Um, if we can... We're going to try to attack this guy right here. Can we move the order? No, we can't. So how is this going to work? Well, they're going to be moved all the way behind. So they're going to be moved one space behind, right? Hopefully he'll die. Almost. There we go. We're going to use our uh, autokinaton to our advantage here. Reposition, and now we can start attacking. Yeah. We should be able to take these guys out very, very quickly. Just gonna use Brassidus and Diona to deal damage to this guy and try to kill him very quickly. So there's one stab. And we're gonna go ahead and strike right here. Deal damage to these two and deal a killing blow. All right. 15 piercing, 15 piercing. So I guess piercing is good against heavy targets. Okay. Um, have the potential to take out two targets. There we go. There's our bear form. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to steamroll. Actually, no. We're going to move here. We're going to strike. Deal damage to those two. Bear form, coming on over. We're gonna maul this guy. And then Brasidas is going to... Can I... Oh, I can't shift the camera. I did not realize that. Like, f four episodes in and I couldn't even, didn't even realize that. If you're still alive, we're gonna go ahead and attack both of them. Although I think they're gonna be dead. Or at least one of them will be dead. From this attack. Oh, they're both dead. Nice. And bear. Oh, but the collision also. Huh. So we got one new ability. There we go. Excellent. That was amazing. I gotta get one of these auto canatons. Shield Grime. That wasn't even a fight. I expected more from the rebels. Haven't they been defeating Sparta's auto canaton troops? But the Spartans didn't have an ace auto autokinaton pilot on their side. Oh, look. It seems they're not done. Uh-oh, here they come. Really? Two battles? That's pretty sweet. Oh, there's a big guy over here. Who's this foo? What's this? The brass head's too slow to run away? You'll pay for that boast, girl. Men, show them our masks. But sir, you said only to- I thought you would be man enough to beat this cur and her Spartan pet. The masks, now! Uh-oh. 
You aren't Spartans, you're cowards. So scared of a ch of change that you betrayed your oaths and your king? Now in defeat, you turn to barbarian magic? By Ares, you'll pay for your crimes today. Brassidas over the Brass Eagle. I knew leaving you alive was a mistake, but the fates have granted me the chance to correct it. So these masks do something special. What have you done? Artemis, I'm... Bleh. She did. Ow. She's coming too. I'll summon the others. Uh-oh. Try to relax now, Arctos. Where am I? We were fighting the Spartan rebels and there was a storm of fire. And Nefel. Nefel, is she okay? Don't worry, Arctos. Your companions are fine. Here she comes now. She's awake! Thanks, Zeus. I didn't think any woman could survive that. Diana, are you okay? How many fingers am I holding up? Your friend will be fine, Nefel. She is under the care of the most skilled healer in Greece. That's a relief. I mean, I've got a, I've gotten some bad burns messing with Thea McKinney, especially working on that super pressurized boiler, but you... I was scared you were gone. I'll be fine. But where are we? Who's he? Why have you... Uh... Take it easy, Diona. Even an Octos like yourself is not... is not immortal. Rest now and regain your strength. The Enchantress and I will watch over you. Enchantress? Oh yeah! She's amazing! I wasn't sure you were going to make it until she got to work on you. Even Hi Hippocrates wasn't doesn't come close. No human healer. You mean... Rest, little bear cub. You can trust Cersei to look over you. Wow. That figure. Just saying. Not Cersei. Uh-oh. The time for hibernation is over, little bear cub. Wake up. Your body's strength has returned and your mind will grow sluggish if you sleep too long. Where are they? What have you done with them? I beg your pardon? I know you, Cersei. The demigoddess who bewitches sailors and turns them into beasts. I don't know if you wanted them on a leash or a dinner plate, but you will bring... Oh, wrong voice. I don't know if you wanted them on a leash or a dinner plate, but you will bring them to me now. My dear aggressive bear cub, I've merely offered them sustenance while you recovered. I'm sure they'll be back here in no time. You've earned your ill reputation, witch. Take me to my friends now, or I'll crush your skull in my claws. Diana! You're awake again! Looking healthy and back to your usual growing, growling at people. It sounds as though someone is owed an apology. Maybe after a few things are explained, why are you helping us, and how did we get here? I can answer that. Splendid. And who are you? Oh, that's Skylax! He helped carry you away after the battle went to Hades! He even fought off a few of the Spartan rebels that followed us! It was strange to watch. His movements looked like they belonged to a bird, not a warrior. And even using some sort of barbarian blade, he defeated our pursuers as if they were children. Skylax, you're Persian, aren't you? Quite a coincidence you were nearby when the rebels just got a shipment of supernatural weapons from the east. What brought you so far from home? Persia may, may be my birthplace, but it's not my home. I'm a Magian. That sounds like a type of Persian barbarian to me. Nefel, why don't you tell us what that means? Oh, of course. She thinks I'm useful after all. I'm not an expert on Persian history, but I think the Magians were a religious group that Artaxerxes supp suppressed. This was around the time he declared himself God King and started reforming Persian religion. They were suppressed? Slaughter to be a more accurate description. Our priests were killed, our temples were raised, and our most sacred artifacts, the fire of knowledge, was extinguished. But there's a fire Artaxerxes can't extinguish, a pure blue flame that glows eternal. By my destiny, I will find it and return it to my temple. The same, des the same destiny that compelled you to bring me to this bewitching Atantris? Uh, your wounds were grave, Arctos. No mortal healer could have helped you, and I. I couldn't just let you die. Not after. Skylax and I became acquainted back when you were still crawling on all fours, 
As a child, not a bear, he knew I could be relied on in th for this favor. Don't tell me you were foolish enough to make a bargain with Cersei. She's granted us a refuge from your pursuers and treated your nearly fatal wound. Whatever she wants in return cannot be worth your life. If he promised you my firstborn, you're not you're going to be disappointed. Ha ha ha. Tell me then, Arctos, what do you think would be a fair price for saving you? Um, do you take iron bars? Why don't you leave the girl out of this, Cersei? The two of us can reach an agreement. Ah yes, Gylax, the exiled magician, still on his quest for the true fire. You know I thought I was sending you to your death when I asked you to claim the Pshant fragment from all for, for me all those years ago, but you ended up being stronger than I imagined. And that was before you studied the teachings of Heraclitus, before you traveled beyond the north wind to distant Hyperborea to learn their art of sword dancing, before you slew the great beast that belched fire and forged a blade from its tooth. You have so much you could offer me. Name your prize, Cersei, but leave the young Arctos out of it. Why is he so determined to protect me? Yes, I can see how your history might make you desperate to help her. After all, some things can't be undone. Hmm? However, your offer is most irrelevant. Fortunately for these three, the price of my hospitality has already been paid. You see, my cousin Artemis has impressed upon me the importance of aiding Diona and her companions. It's a shame, really. The Spartan would have made a handsome turtle. Though not all is lost, there are still quite a few things I could do with you, Skylax. He's my companion. Artemis' protection extends to him. Surely you jest. A person joining you on your quest to save all of Greece? And I know you hadn't met him before you woke up on my island. Skylax of Persia, my foes have grown more numerous and deadly than I imagined. If you're willing, I would ask you for your help in fulfilling my goddess's quest in saving Greece. It would be a privilege to fight by your side. Maybe on this journey I can finally just thank you, Arctos. Charming, but you don't really expect me to believe he's your companion. Haven't I said he is? Perhaps you should take up your dispute with Artemis. My, aren't you feral, barking and growling to guard your pack? But that one doesn't deserve your protection. Now, servant of the Huntress, how else would you indulge my hospitality? Alright, Skylax has joined the party, and that's going to do it for this episode. Sorry, it's a bit of a long one. Um, but we're going to... I'm going to leave my final impressions in the next video, and I'll talk about that in the next video. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Check the description for my Facebook and Twitter information. Oh my gosh, look at this fox. Like, he's like, yeah, you're gonna, are you guys going to get on now? Like, get out of here. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Check the description for my Facebook and Twitter information. While you're at it, give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series. And subscribe if you would like to see more. I will see you guys in the next video.